Hello, welcome to the third video in this tutorial series. In this video we will look at adjusting the physical properties of the game objects so they are no longer affected by gravity and we will also write a script which allow, will allow the paddles to be moved by pressing the keys. So to prevent the ball and the paddles from being affected by gravity what you need to do is you need to go into each game object and set the gravity scale here to zero. So you need to do that for the ball and both paddles. Uh, once this is done, these game objects will no longer be affected by gravity, which is what we want. So I've created a, co a folder called Scripts here, and in that folder, I'm going to create a new C# -sharp script called Paddle Script, and I'm going to double-click on that to open it. Um, I'm using um, Visual Studio. You can use Mono Development or, or whatever other IDE. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to do a little organization first here. It's not such a big deal really for um, smaller scripts like this. But once you start getting to script larger scripts, it's very useful to have regions so you can quickly navigate to the code that you want. So I'm just going to set this up uh, a region region and uh, mono methods and here I will end the region uh, and region now we're going to uh, adjust the paddles using the physics system so it's recommended that you use fixed update to do this so let's create a method now uh, it'll be a mono method called uh, fixed update fixed update okay and what we will do here is we will check for player input that's a method and this will be called every fixed update which I understand is called um, uh, periodically as opposed to every frame an update. So let's just create another region down here called class methods. And we will create this method now. Uh, so it'll be public void check for player input. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll set it up for W and S up and down. So if input dot get key, now get key isn't the best way to do it. Well, we're just going to do this for now, and I'll, I'll show you um, a better way to do it later on. Um, get key, and we'll say key code dot W. So what's that, what that's doing is it's just checking if the W key is pressed and we will, we will uh, put another method in here to move it. So let's just copy this now and let's change this to S. So now we have WS, we have input, a detective WS are pressed. So what do we want to do now? If W is pressed we want to move paddle up and if S is pressed we want to move paddle down so now we need to create these methods just leave some space for commenting um, so we'll go public uh, void, we don't want to return anything and move paddle up. Okay. So to move the paddle up, we're going to apply force to the rigid body. It's the easiest way. It's well, it's one of the ways to. There are others. That's just how we'll do it in, in this. So um, we need to have a reference. Um, to the rigid body. So what we need to do, well, let's go up here now and 
Um, just to explain a little more, and every every time this is called, you could just go and search for the rigid body that this script uh, will be attached to. And it won't really matter in a game this small, but it's much more efficient to get a reference to it. So you, you don't need to look it up every time that W or S is pressed. So let's go up here and create another region called Fields. Uh, this will be data that will be um, visible through the whole class. Uh, and we'll end the region. So we we're going to want to um, get a rigid body. So uh, public, and we will get a rigid body 2D, and we'll just call it this rigid uh, this rigid body. Okay. So. Um, we haven't got the reference to the rigid body yet, but we'll just take care of the rest of the, uh, the this this move up and down methods. So <coughs> we'll say if W is pressed, call move paddle up, and in move paddle up, we want to say rigid body this rigid body dot add force, um, and it will be vector 2 dot up now we're also going to want to add a paddle speed here so let's just go back up and create a, a field called public float paddle speed and we'll say say five just to see how that is. Um, so vector two dot up will pretty much as it says it, it will it will it is the up direction given the, the direction the camera is facing. Um, so we'll multiply that by paddle speed and now let's make the move Paddle down and move paddle down. So all we need to do here is we just need to change it to vector two dot down by paddle speed. And let's build that. Okay, with no errors. So let's go back into Unity and we'll attach the script to both of the paddles. One to paddle one paddle two. Okay, so we spoke earlier about getting a reference to the rigid body so we could move it without having to check it every time a move request is passed. There are a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'll show you. Uh, um, the simplest way is likely just to um, drag the rigid body component in. Um, you could also find it in the start method if you want. We can we can do that later, just so you can see how to do it that way too. So let's just have a look at what happens now. So we are. I mean, it is working. There's probably a little too much. You see, I'm not holding W anymore. There's too much. There's a little too much momentum there. But we have the we have the rough idea down, and you'll also notice both paddles are moving. So that's something we'll look at in the next video. And I will see you then.